Hello everyone. We're now ready to move on to something that's a pretty important topic for ray tracing. So we talked about the implicit form of planes, so how do you represent planes? And that's given a point, we'll call it A now, on the plane. Um, and given a normal N, any point on the plane must satisfy the condition that if I construct a vector from A to that point, then that vector is perpendicular to the normal. So we can write this equation P, so any point P that's on the plane, minus a fixed point A that's on the plane, dotted with the normal is equal to zero. And we also did the parametric form of ray. So we said a ray is some initial point P0 plus a scalar T times the direction V. And we just have to make sure that the T is non-negative so that we stay in front of this point in the direction of the ray. For a line, t could be any real number, but we're going to be focused on rays now because, again, we're building towards the ray tracer. Okay, so let's put these two things together now. So let's try to consider when will a ray, a particular ray, intersect a given plane, and where is that point of intersection? So what we should do, actually, is just Okay, so we said I want to find a point on a plane that satisfies this equation. Let's just plug in the equation for the ray and see if we can solve it for a t that will give us that intersection. So, yeah, and let's just draw it out first. What, what am I even looking at? So I have some kind of plane and I have a ray like this one. And I want to know, okay, well, where does this intersect the plane? And in this example, it looks like it happens, you know, right around here. So we would be interested in solving for this point here. So this is the point we want. Okay, let me just draw that arrow just so we know we're looking at a ray. Okay, so the ray is going in this direction, and then it hits the plane. So where does it hit the plane? So let's go ahead and just plug it in like I said. So the equation to satisfy the plane is going to then be P minus A. So now P is P0 plus TV minus A dot N equals 0. Okay, solve for T. Now, luckily, this is just a linear equation. It's a linear equation in vectors, but we can still do some pretty straightforward stuff with distributing and combining like terms. So let me, actually, since P0 and A are a constant, let me actually put them together. So I'll, set, I'll rearrange this equation as P0 minus A plus TV dot N equals 0. Okay. So I'm getting closer to isolating t by itself. Um, now let me actually use the distributive property of the dot product. So what I can say is p0 minus a plus tv quantity dot n. That's actually equal to p0 minus a dot n plus t times v dot n. So here's our equation. Okay, I'm getting closer and closer. So now let me actually subtract p0 minus a dot n from both sides. So I'll say t v dot n is equal to negative quantity p0 minus a dot n. Um, okay, now we're really close. We just have this scalar v dot n as a factor next to t. And if we divide both sides of that equation by v dot n, then we have it. So t is equal to negative p0 minus a dot n over t v dot n. And I just want to clean this up a little bit. Let me say t is equal to a minus p0 dot n over, um, whoops, I had a t there before. I meant to say t is equal to negative p0 minus a dot n. Okay, so I'm distributing the negative. And here's my final equation over v dot n. Okay, so that's it. t then is equal to the initial point on the plane minus the initial point on the ray dotted with the normal over the direction vector for the ray dotted with the norm. And so then if I wanted to figure out which point is that, I would just plug the t in. I would say, well, 
the point on the plane is then equal to just that t times v. Okay, and that's it. Um, so just plug it in. All right, so there's the derivation, but you can just remember this formula here at the bottom. Now pause for a moment, and I want you to think, where can this go wrong? So is, is there a particular scenario where my choice of initial point on the plane and my direction vector for the ray could possibly lead to this not being defined, this t maybe having an issue. So there's a couple things. Yeah, pause and, and think about it. So there's a couple things to consider. Now I'm, I'm going to get rid of this derivation and just leave a little room here. So here's our solution. Okay, well, one thing we always have to watch out for is could we be dividing by zero? So special case one, v dot n is equal to zero. So geometrically, what this actually means, okay, this is saying that v, the direction of the vector, is perpendicular to the normal to the plane. Well, what that's like saying is, let me, let me draw it geometrically. So here's the normal to the plane. And we're saying that we have a ray down there and the direction of the ray happens to be perpendicular to the normal of the plane so, so here's that picture now as you stare at this and see these two vectors are perpendicular right as you stare at this what you realize actually is that's saying that the ray is parallel to the plane And parallel objects never intersect in Euclidean geometry. So that's a special case. And you got to watch out. It's totally possible to have a ray that, that's parallel to the plane. It's like saying, I'm dividing by zero. It's like saying, this thing intersects the plane at infinity. That's what it's saying mathematically. Um, for our purposes, it means it never intersects. OK. Now, you notice if v dot n is close to zero, what it says is it intersects close to infinity. So if this, if this thing is not totally perpendicular, maybe it's kind of like at this angle, you'll see it takes, it's going to take a long time. I'm going to have to scroll way over until I see where that intersection point is. Okay, so, so that's what's going on having that v dot n in the denominator. So the dot product between the direction vector of the ray and the normal to the plane is very important. Okay, so that's a problem, but there, there's one more thing we have to consider, actually. So let me try to make a little room here. Okay, so we know what, what the ray intersect plane is looking like. Oops, I shouldn't have gotten rid of, there we go. Oh, I still want to have this right here. Okay. Okay, so let me move this up. Okay, there's one more special case we need to consider. So what is it that keeps, what is it that makes a ray different from a plane? Or sorry, what is it that makes a ray different from a line? Well, remember, we have to be on a particular side of the ray, right? So I, I said t has to be greater than or equal to zero. So it's totally possible that you can have a valid solution to this equation, a minus p zero dot n over v dot n. But actually, t could be less than zero in the solution of that equation. And geometrically, what that means is we have a plane like this. Um, and our ray actually points away from the plane. So here's our plane normal. And it just so happens when we solve this equation, what we find is we get a negative t. So what that's like saying is, you would actually have to go backwards to intersect this plane. Um, but that's not what we want. So really, we know that this is a ray, so t has to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is like saying the ray is in front of the plane. 
and that's also not a valid intersection. So these are the two cases we have to consider here. So now I'm just going to give you a couple quick sanity check questions about this. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs>